Now, one of the things you definitely want to check during the break-in period is your chain tension. Um, I got about 420 miles on the bike now. So, uh, I was looking at my chain and it's got a lot more play in it now. It's only, you should only have like an inch of play. When you lift up on it, it should only move like about an inch. It's a little range, but an inch is like right about in the middle. Um, so it's a little more than that now. So I'm going to be tightening that up and I'll show you guys how to do that. Now, luckily this is a pretty simple process. I'll show you what it looks like now. Um, you can see it's, you know, it's, it's not insanely loose, but that's a little more than you want it to be. It's easy to do. You can see here, this is the, the markers here. And you got this marker dot, there's one on each side. So what you're gonna do for this, you're gonna loosen one of these. There's one on each side. This is the axle. So you're gonna loosen that up. Loosen the locking nut, which is the one on the outside, on both sides. So you can see it's a similar deal over here. You got this. I'm probably going to loosen this side. Um, so loosen both locking nuts, one on each side. And then loosen the inner one, and that's what's going to start to move the wheel on the frame. Okay. So to tension it, obviously, you're going to want to move the wheel back. So this dot should end up on a marker to the right of where it is right now. So pretty simple process. You can do it just on the kickstand. You don't need a special stand or anything. And it's definitely important for the life of the chain and the sprocket. One important thing to keep in mind when you're loosening the nut on the axle, you're gonna have to hold back one side or the other because it will spin if you try to just loosen one side going to need a different size socket on each side because one side is 19 millimeter the other side is 21 millimeter not sure why they do that but just keep that in mind so you don't use the wrong size and damage the hardware now you just want to get this axle nut loose enough to where it will be able to slide on the frame you don't need to take it completely off and you don't want to take it completely off it might be easier with two people but you can reach around the wheel and hold both yourself so it's not a problem to do this project on your own but once you get it loose enough that it will be able to slide on the frame you can move on to the next part of the process which is going to be making the actual adjustments so the locking nut on the outside is just to keep the other nut from spinning when you don't want it to so you can just go ahead and loosen those up and now the inner nut that actually makes the adjustments, if you need to add tension, you're actually going to have to tighten that, which is going to pull the wheel back and add tension to the chain. You want to do both sides evenly. You do have the marker line, so it makes it easier. Just before you tighten up the nut on that axle again, you want to make sure that the dot and line markers are even on both sides. This will ensure that the wheel is straight and you're not going to have any issues in the future. Now when you tighten down the locking nut to keep that one in place, it's probably a good idea to get two wrenches and to hold the adjuster nut so that when you tighten down the locking nut, it's not tightening it more and getting it out of line with what you had lined up. Now we do have torque specs from the manual for tightening the axle nut again. So the manual gives us 110 newton meters. Most torque wrenches have newton meters and foot pounds on each, so you shouldn't really need a conversion, but if you do, I'll throw one up there. So after you get your adjuster nuts and locking nuts in place, you're going to go ahead and get your torque wrench. Put a wrench on the other side so it doesn't spin. Torque it to 110 newton meters, and after that, you should be ready to get back on the road.